Hello, and uh, this is Kiki, doing a uh, compare and contrast of Conflict versus Advanced Wars 2. Uh, little did I know before I made this video that there was actually an NES ver version of this game, uh, quite similar, called Fancom Wars. And so, uh, before anybody writes about, well, why did you review Fancom Wars? Well, I just heard about it, so give me a break. Anyway, uh, uh, this map that I've chosen is uh, Momiji Island, and uh, my CO that I'm using is Grit. Uh, he's the uh, long distance uh, CO, so uh, if you don't know him, uh, you, well, you, you just don't play Advanced Wars, I guess. Uh, but he's the, one of the Blue Nation. Uh, Luminous Nation COs, and uh, like I said, his specialty is he does long range attacks. All of his units get plus one range, and he takes a little bit more damage versus uh, direct fire. Uh, the uh, dual strike, I'm not. I, I, I tried it, it's rubbish, and it completely, totally misses everything off the park. Like, like on dual strike, they says that he's weak against infantry as well. It's like no, he's just weak against direct fire units. He can use infantry just fine. It, I, I don't know if they were trying to rebalance him or something, but it, it just sounded off. Because like no, no, he's not weak against direct fire. He's just weak against infantry using direct fire. Like okay, you know. But anyway, pardon my ranting. But anyway, and the uh, CEO we're reversing is Adler, who is, uh, I'm sorry to say, one of the uh, weirdest uh, COs I'd have to say as far as gameplay. Uh, for a black hole, uh, basically, he's a. Uh, they try to make him uh, kind of like think of a snake. Uh, he moves fast, doing quick and sudden strikes. Uh, all of his CO powers are based on either he moves one extra space or his units move two extra spaces. So basically, you're basically is he's just for like fine-tuning attacks for if you're trying to do something set up to where you want to do uh, kind of like a like a TT rush or I mean you know a mid tank rush or regular tank rush or something. Uh, to where you want to make on this little bit extra movement, but uh, otherwise he's pretty much useless, and he spams his uh, superpower constantly. And like I said, uh, Grit's normal ability is he gets plus one range, and he also gets an additional plus one range when he uses his normal power, and plus two range when he does his uh, superpower. So. Uh, Basically, this makes him a wee bit overpowered. I don't know. It, that's probably why they dual strike when they tried to rebalance him or something. But uh, he is a little overpowered on some maps. Uh, basically, the main main thing here is I'm doing like sort of like a Sammy strat here of just uh, rushing. Everything. Uh, Sammy is a infantry CO. She, uh, where her vehicles are not as strong, but her infantry is a lot stronger, uh, and she has a faster capture rate, and she has like an ability where she can insta capture a town. When that's her superpower is her infantry units move like plus two or three sectors, and. Uh, AP and the uh, transports. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I mean, uh, her APCs move uh, an additional one or two spaces as well. Don't know about T copters. Uh, but anyway, sorry for my babbling. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning here. Uh, but basically. Uh, it's kind of like a mixture of her gameplay and uh, Grid's gameplay. 
And if you're generally a grit player, normally what you do is you have uh, fodder units uh, block for your uh, indirect fire units, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, basically, I'm just using my little APCs here to uh, block the enemy rush from uh, getting a start. I've already deployed a rocket right there. That's why I made a quick dash for that factory there. And basically I just start spamming that rocket there. Now here the enemy is just beginning captures. Uh, I'm not going to be able to stop them and I'm not going to bother to stop them. I'll let them have it. And this is the second part of the strategy for this menu, for what I'm doing. Basically what I'm going to do here is, as you noticed, all of his units right now are focused on the southwest part. Well, once I get things going on, on that northeast base there, uh, eventually all of his units will start gravitating there, and then I can start setting up my rockets to start hitting anything that spawns. Uh, killing his entire cash flow. Very much. Uh, like I said, it's not too hard, just but it's pretty easy, pretty easy to figure out. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, he's a little overpowered. See right, right there, he just that's just basic normal attack and he just wiped out a tank unit. No problem. Uh, I, I said I haven't, I really got turned off by the dual strike, but I can sort of understand maybe if that's their attempt at balancing. Don't know. Uh, also, as I said before, uh, unlike uh, the conflict system, which is what I shared before. Uh, this one's focused on fixed percentages. Uh, each CO has strengths and weaknesses, and they're all affected by by a game mechanic. Uh, there's only one CO that's based on luck, but everything else is generally within one to two percent. And uh, basically, it, it just comes down to which units attack which units over there. There's nothing fancy or special about it. Uh, versus the other one, it's completely random and you have, and it's based on your skill and a little bit of luck, and a lot more on luck on how to beat it. And uh, I'll go ahead and call it a video after this turn, or during the mid of this turn. Uh, they go ahead and do uh, part two. Anyway, uh, this BK is heading out for uh, Advanced Wars, uh, part one. Uh, thank you.